by board bike our hashtag for tonight's discussion the phenomenon of border borders sweeping across the country is it a challenge is it an opportunity are there things that we need to look at in terms of regulation tonight in studio i've got with me the director general of the national transport and safety um, authority his name is francis major been in office since march this year i believe thank you for joining us thank um, you now we'll start with a very interesting statistic that we can look at in mm -hmm. in different ways yes. six hundred thousand yes registered motorcycles mm -hmm. is this commercial motors uh, commercial motorcycles these yes. are according to your statistics sure is this a challenge to you or is it an opportunity well i think it is both a challenge and an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the numbers are big uh, this mode of transport is very convenient to the, the especially the the rural people it's a source of employment to the youth uh, but uh, it comes with a lot of challenges as well. Yeah, what are the challenges? There are many challenges. I think uh, we need this service. And uh, Allah, let me tell you this. I once asked an old muse from my village, what are some of the two things that he thinks have been transformational in his life? The first thing he, men he mentioned was a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. The next thing he mentioned was uh, uh, this border border. And I asked him why. That doesn't sound like a challenge. That actually sounds like something. Positive. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm coming to. He said that this this motorcycle can drive, can be can take him right into his home. Mm -hmm. So it is very important. It's as a mode of transport. But however, uh, it has also presented very very serious challenge to us. And uh, I think it is high time we started regulating this sector. Yeah, but how so? What is the specific challenge? If it's so mm -hmm. transformative, especially in the rural areas, mm -hmm. what's a challenge? Yes. I think one of the challenges I must mention is the, 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 the riders themselves. Some of them are riding these uh, motorcycles without uh, licenses, which means they are, they, they are not properly, uh, they don't have the required skill mm -hmm. to, to ride. Uh, the other challenge is, of course, uh, issues of overloading. We have seen some of them transporting pigs, some of them are transporting calves to the market, uh, carrying five members of the same family. Uh, and obviously, if you look in urban areas, total disregard to the traffic rules. All right, but you know the NTSA, of course, is in charge of licensing yes. of these people. Mm -hmm. Where are the regulations? Well, we are actually in, in a very, in a, a quite an advanced stage. On Monday, we are meeting the parliamentary committee to finalize the regu proposed regulations so that we can start implementing them. Mm -hmm. And I think I need to mention that uh, these re regulations have a component addresses actually three people. The first is the rider himself. What are the responsibility of the rider? He must wear the right protective gear. He must ensure that he doesn't carry excess load. And uh, he has to ensure that he has a license. Yeah. Then to the owner of the of the motorcycle because we realize that m some of these motors uh, border borders that we are seeing here some of them maj majority of them are actually owned by people who are sitting in offices or who are doing other businesses so the first thing is that they must ensure they must ensure as the owner of the rider of the motorcycle that whoever is riding it is properly licensed the motorcycle is insured the protective gear is available for use then the third person we are trying to address is the passenger himself Mm -hmm. As you can see in that photo, yeah. uh, 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 it's already overloaded. The lady is sitting not as straight. So even the stability of that motorcycle is not there. So the passenger himself has a responsibility to ensure that first of all he uses the right gear, a helmet, a reflective jacket. He also makes sure that he doesn't board the motorcycle if there is another passenger. Yeah, but you see, the, the, there is a school of thought though that all of those things that you mentioned still mm -hmm. come back to your doorstep yes. in terms of licensing. Mm -hmm. The picture that we see on our, on our video wall tonight is the common scene everywhere mm -hmm. across Kenya. Yes. I mean, you can't go into a, a, a village or a hamlet without mm -hmm. seeing that. And like you mentioned, cattle and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we understand that the NTSA has not been in, in, in existence for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what in the interim can we do to ensure that our people are safe as they ride and our border, border operations? operators know the law and the rules well public awareness is important uh, and i must say that enforcement is what we need to address mm -hmm. because uh, even without new regulations 
I believe we can we can we can reduce the kind of uh, confusion or the kind of chaos that are on the roads. Yeah. Even without addition, adding adding more uh, regulations. More and just to speak about that, actually, we've got a statistic that perhaps can bring this into into sharper focus. Mm -hmm. Seventy percent mm -hmm. of people who have registered new vehicles mm -hmm. um, in Kenya this year and 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 over i think one or two years mm -hmm. it's been commercial motorcycles so mm -hmm. why not at point of sale mm -hmm. try and, and and create that public awareness mm -hmm. at the point of sale have the sort of information that the person who's buying a motorcycle needs to be able to follow the law well i think we are we are doing that and the first thing is public awareness which we are doing uh, in fact last week we met uh, the, the the dealers motorcycle dealers association of kenya mm -hmm. to try and come and be with us as we try to 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 to, to have more publicity and uh, sensitizing the public on the dangers of these things but alan we have a problem in this country some of the things that we see on our roads nobody even needs to tell you that it is dangerous yeah you can see it from the onset but i don't know why people assume because it is not me who is being who i assume that i i will not fall by the way so I think some of these things, uh, is, is, it, it, it has to do with the society that we live in. Is we become a society that it does not mind about the life of others, uh, and the only motivation is to get uh, as much money in the shortest time possible. Those are things that we must address. And in your, in your, in your, in your, in your documentary today, you will see the kind of injuries that uh, some of these people have gone through. Mm -hmm. it, it is really serious. And if you look at most of the district hospitals, you'll find a ward kept aside for border border riders. And we'll get to that in a moment. But if we're challenging society to be able to change, that's a far, far bigger thing to be able to do. And it involves a lot more mm -hmm. people than just the NTSA. But yes. one thing that the NTSA can be in control of to some extent mm -hmm. is enforcement. What, yes. what, is, what is happening with regards to the NTSA and regulating how the police react to these people? Because... Mm -hmm. One of the, the major complaints from border border operators is that they are being fleeced by the police on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is true that uh, enforcement, uh, there are some challenges. And uh, we are working with the traffic police because NTSA can only enforce some of these things using the, the, the police. We are working with them to try and minimize and as much as possible control uh, the corruption that uh, is there. But again, we want to ask uh, the, the writers, why should you, if you know you are observing the, lo the law, why should you give a bribe? Mm -hmm. They give a bribe because they know they are carrying in excess. They know they don't have sometimes licenses. Or perhaps because it takes a long time to get th through the court system, even if you are right, which is the majority mm -hmm. of the reason why people, even people like you and I, mm -hmm. give bribes so that you, 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 you leapfrog the process of going through a court, even if you're right. And let's face it, a lot of the people who mm -hmm. ride border borders mm -hmm. aren't well-heeled people. These are people who are really starting off in life. Yes, I, I, do, I do believe that some of these processes have been inefficient. But I can tell you an example of what we are doing. Uh, from 15th of next month, uh, application and renewal of driving license will be online. Which means you don't have to travel from your spot where you are or where you operate from to access some of these documents. Mm -hmm. They'll be available online. Previously, they used to be done in centers where sometimes you have to travel long distances to access some of these services. Is that a sink for corruption? Well, I think that's some, that some of the issues that we are saying. As you bring in efficiency, uh, each chances of corruptions are minimized. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things. And I think we will be working to have uh, a situation where if I am convicted of a traffic offense, I should be in a position to pay easily where I have admitted that I'm at fault I should be given an opportunity to pay in the most convenient way. And now the technology has made it possible. Yeah, so I think that is the direction we are moving. Let's steer this back to uh, the border border operators. And of course, the, the subject that we're talking about is still mm -hmm. pertinent to them with mm -hmm. respect to the kind of fines that they face and mm -hmm. the corruption that they have to deal with on in a mm -hmm. daily basis. Do you and people within the NTSA and, and enforcement organizations think of them as contributors to this economy? Yeah, they do contribute because uh, transport is a very important aspect in, in this economy. Uh, and, but however, there are other aspects that are also negative because when the government lifted duty, it was actually a gesture to the young people, to the youth, so that they can gain, they can participate in meaningful employment. However, this has now brought in new challenges. Look at the amount of money that the government is spending in hospitals. The facilities are already strained. 
we have so many of these people on a daily basis who are getting injured some of them very very serious injuries on situations which are easily avoidable yeah we, we'll get to injuries and the, the the impact that it's having on our health systems mm -hmm. but let's stay with this for a moment mm -hmm. The border border operators feel that they are not being included both economically and mm -hmm. also consultatively mm -hmm. in developing the new guidelines, mm -hmm. the NTSA itself. Did you consult border border we, operators? We have consulted very, very widely. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, we paid and published the regulation in a full page paid by ourselves. The man in the, in the documentary that you just yes. saw says, and he um, says that his organization has mm -hmm. about 150,000 members. He mm -hmm. says he wasn't consulted at all. Let, let me tell you, Alan, the problem with this country is that when, when you try to correct a problem, you, you find people who are otherwise not ever visible coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you, this is the first time I hear, I'm hearing of chairman, border Boda owners or something, association. Mm -hmm. It is, it is unfortunate because what we should be asking them, where have you been when your members are behaving the way they are behaving all of our roads? So when you try to correct a problem, that is when you find people coming up saying, I'm chairman for this and this, I'm chairman for this, I'm responsible for this. But in trying to address the Chile challenge, we have never seen them coming forward to say that our people are killing on the road, our people are riding without licenses, our people are overloading. You have never, ever seen them do that. Communication is a two-way street, though. Have you gone down to the ground? And this is what we've done. If there was a really a, an association, this is what we've done. We've published the regulations clearly so that everybody who is interested can go through them. We have even gone further and paid for airing of this information in all vernacular languages mm -hmm. so that we invite them to participate in the process. We've received a number of memorandums, suggestions on uh, how to improve this document and they still have an opportunity because these regulations have not been finalized. Okay, but what is, the, what is their voice saying? What are they saying with respect to the regulations? What, what do border border operators want? Well, I think one of the things is uh, resistance to some of this change. Yeah. There are those who are saying, yes, these are, it's necessary because some of them uh, the protective gear is not provided for them and obviously it becomes helpful to them to that now we are putting it into law that the owner of this of this motorcycle has to pro, to provide the proper gear. Yeah. But you will find that when people are used to doing things in a particular way, and they are being told to conform into a different way, these areas of resistance will be there. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need to do is to look at the bigger the bigger picture. Is who is it meant to benefit the citizens of this country? Mm -hmm. And if you've seen what is happening on in Kampala, uh, if we don't control this problem now we will soon be there. True. So it is the right time that we said some of these things we must stop. Okay. Yes. Um, some, of course, would argue that we should have started controlling it the minute that um, the tax regulations were changed to yes. be able to allow that. But, of course, sure. NTSA was four years. We were not born by then. <laughs> yeah, you weren't born by then. Yes. Let's move on to another statistic. Mm -hmm. This was um, a statistic that's rather, rather dark with mm -hmm. respect to deaths on our roads. Yes. In 2009, mm -hmm. and I'm sure this must have changed mm -hmm. now, especially with the proliferation of border mm -hmm. borders across the country. Mm -hmm. 35, mm -hmm. the average age of deaths mm -hmm. on our roads. Yes. How much of that do you think has changed with mm -hmm. respect to the age of people who are dying on our roads, specifically with respect to border border operators? Maybe I need to give the overall statistics. Yeah. Overall, as at 23rd of this month, the fatalities on our road had reduced by 11.6. Uh, the saddest thing is that for the border border sector, instead of the fatalities decreasing, it's actually on an increase. And uh, simple, if you look at uh, as the 23rd of uh, 23rd of October this year, yeah. we have lost 314 people who are motor who are border border riders. Mm -hmm. This is an increase for last year by about 17 percent. If you look at the PSV sectors, that is the matatu industry. The Matatu industry, because of the regulations that we introduced early this year, have actually started showing very positive change. And the, the fatalities have actually decreased by about 25%. Yeah. So clearly, it tells us that these regulations are working. Except for in the border border In the border industry. border is the, actually the only category where we are seeing, instead of the, the statistics going down, they are actually going up. 
Okay. So it tells us that it is the right time for us to move fast. All right, but you can, you can look this. at this problem in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Either the enforcement, like we had mentioned, is not yes. strong enough, mm -hmm. or um, vehicle operators now, uh, matatus, buses, private vehicle owners, don't know how to drive mm -hmm. alongside border borders. Mm -hmm. Of course, which is a more obvious reason, the border border operators themselves don't know. Which to you is the biggest reason? Let me tell you, Alan, you have used these roads. The way these people cross the road or use the road is terrible. You will find a, a rider overtaking from the wrong side, cutting through the traffic. In an intersection, they will come and cross over. The traffic, they don't look even at the traffic lights. In a junction, they just come and go through. Yeah. I think this has to do with the level of education, the training that is not adequate. And I think it is high time that it, be made, it, make, it, be, it is made very punitive that if you d decide to ride without a license then it becomes very very punitive because you are endangering not just your life but for other motorists most of these people actually uh, have been knocked because of total disregard even in a situation where you don't expect him to cross yeah you find him going all right let's talk very quickly about the legislation that david ocheng the mp for Kenya. unfortunately he, he was supposed to join us but uh, you know what happened to him with yes. regard to the plane mm -hmm. um he, he's brought some legislation before parliament with mm -hmm. respect to um actually bringing down the cost of entry mm -hmm. into this industry from yes. about seven thousand shillings per license to three thousand mm -hmm. does that run counter to what you want as uh, the ntsa well, I think that, 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 or any, any suggestion that will improve this sector we are we, we are actually welcome yeah but that's increasing the number of people on the roads and not talking very much about legislation that can um, that can manage mm -hmm. um, how border border operators operate on our roads mm -hmm. isn't this just increasing the burden on our roads and increasing the burden on the health sector well I think what we need to do is this first of all is as long as people are adequately trained to use these facilities it becomes very important but this are still the proposal I haven't seen the proposal by the honorable member but I know on Monday we are meeting a parliamentary committee for transport to try and uh, finalize this issue of the regulation because parliament actually directed that there is need for this sector to be regulated urgently. Yeah. So we are actually ahead of we were actually ahead of that because we had already developed this regulation. We just want to finalize them with the, with the parliamentary committee before they can actually be tabled and uh, and gazetted so that we start implementing. All right, very quickly, what are, what are the timelines with respect to getting this legislation, getting the regulations on board and so we can see this happening on our roads? Uh, from our perspective, we've, we are finalizing with the parliamentary committee maybe next week, then the other process, but I hope that by the end of this year, this regulation should be in place All the, right. at the very latest. Okay. Yes. All right, Director General of the NTSA, Francis Major, thank you very much for joining us. Lots to discuss. There is a three-part uh, series that's still running on KTN with respect to Border Borders. By Board Bike, you can keep your, your comments coming in about this very important topic about um, the other Kenya with respect to that. Now, of course... At the end of every discussion here at KTN, we ask you what the point is. And with respect to border borders, there are very many, very diverse points with respect to how this industry operates. Yvonne Okwara has been following that discussion, and she now tells us what that point is. Indeed, what is the point? Well, Motorcycle Kenya, who have a Twitter handle at Motorcycle Kenya, the umbrella organization for all bikers clubs and motorcycle associations in Kenya, today says 314 riders have died this year alone in, biker, in bike accidents, which is why this is an important issue to discuss today. First off, what is the point? Regulation is obviously needed. Uh, training of these border border riders or any motorcycle owner, as well as infrastructure. Should we be providing Providing lanes every time we're improving our infrastructure and our roads in terms of providing for motorcycle riders. How did the sector grow so fast before we got to this point? Well, 
Nonetheless, here we are with 600,000 registered motorcycles in Kenya at the moment. And also when it comes to regulation, traffic police are also an important stakeholder in terms of helping the NTSA in its quest to institute uh, proper safety measures. When a motorcycle rider passes by with more passengers on his bike than is needed, passing by a traffic police officer who doesn't stop him and ask him um, what he's doing or stopping him for that matter is something we need to talk about. Now, what is interesting and important to note is that the border borders provide jobs for the youth. All of those that you see there are young people who are getting into this sector and using it as a means to earn a living. And that is why regulation for the sector is also important. Finally, the point we'd like to make, in as much as regulation by government agencies is important, riders must also be responsible, including those that ride on the bike. The regulation requiring them, one, to go for training, two, get a license, three, use a helmet and a reflector jacket, those are important for them as well. So it's also a matter of personal responsibility for owners or users of motorcycles. And also another interesting point that was brought up by the NTSA Director General, talking about the riders themselves forming their associations. Just one of the associations important. Is it only when they feel they're being um, that things are not fair in that regard or should they also be coming up and having self-regulation amongst themselves? These are the questions we will continue to ask as we continue to air this uh, series by Board Bike. We'll be taking a look at your feedback as we carry on with this bulletin on Twitter and indeed on our SMS line 22155. That is a point.